ways, right? I think all of us, all, all of us who have any success in the classroom, only have success because we spark imagination. We don't do it with all of our students, and we certainly don't do it all the time, but some of the time, and with some of our students, it works. And, but I mean, we do it in many different ways. Right? I could imagine, if I knew any of it, I could imagine that um, it would be possible to interest students in the study of religion through physics or even mathematics, which is, you know, another way of looking at the mystery of things and another description of how things are the way they are. Well, I can't do any of that. Um, and I imagine if you were a musician, it would be another good way to do it. And sometimes I'll play people bits of music in class and they'll look at me like, God, is he still listening to that old stuff? And I'm not talking about, I'm not talking about Mozart here, I'm talking about uh, something I heard, something that was written for the first time 10 years ago, but you know, for undergraduate students, that's golden oldies. Uh, so, so I'm wary of doing that. Um, but if you use the classics, the works of literature, uh, then if they say, this is out of date, you can say, you don't know what you're talking about. And uh, actually, the, the whole notion of the use of, of a classic, which is, could be a literary or artistic classic, it could be a classic automobile, um, is a good way into thinking about religious texts. Um, I've always, well, not always, but since I read a great book by a British literary critic, Frank Commode, called The Classic, uh, in which he defines the classic as something like the following. It's um, a classic is a work of the, ima the imagination uh, who, which contains much more than it appears to contain, and the understanding of this work is enlarged by the action of time. So the idea would be that what makes a classic a classic, and it's a cl so if we think of classic text, we might be talking about a text of some great religious tradition or, I don't know, a saint's life or something like that. As time goes on, the change in the interpreter and the context in which you're reading it draws more out of it, so it's richer and richer and richer. That's certainly the way that Christians would think about, or, or Jews would think about interpreting their sacred scriptures. So the use of a literary classic can help people to get the point about how a religious text is never just what it says. It's always the surplus of meaning that is going to come through uh, over a period of time. So I suppose using literature is, is a good way for that, in that respect at least, that it, it, it gets that sense of something that, um, the understand, something which in a sense is always the same, but in a sense it's always changing and growing. Your understanding of it is always changing and growing. Um, yeah, um, I think the important thing is not literature, the important thing is works of the imagination.